Hello internet people and welcome to Vlogmas Day 24. Today is the very last day of Vlogmas and I'm putting this up on Christmas so I'm hoping you're having a very Merry Christmas in whatever situation you have this year with COVID and if you don't celebrate Christmas I'm wishing you a very happy holidays and a happy new year. I thought that for this video I would share my Make 9 2021 with you. So for my Make 9 this year I decided to only sew fabric that was in my stash um, and mostly patterns that are in my stash. A few patterns I bought on Black Friday, so technically they're in my stash as of right now. Um, so I'm sure that I will be buying patterns and fabric this year, but I'm gonna start out with the goal of sewing up what I already have. So let's get started. Number one is Vogue 1680. And I'm going to make it out of this rayon chali. I got this rayon chali at the Vogue Fabrics booth at the Sew Expo last year. I love the uh, sort of retro 40s print. And I'm going to do this view here. Number two is Very Easy Vogue 9315. And I was very inspired by this striped version here because I chose this rayon chali to make it out of. So hopefully it looks just like the pa pattern envelope. I also got this fabric at the Vogue, um, the Vogue Fabric Sew Expo booth last year. It seems like I need to be working my way through last year's Sew Expo haul. You'll see, there's a few more in here. <laughs> Number three is also a Sew Expo fabric purchase. It's for Butterick 6378 and it's this top here that I would like to do. And the fabric is another rayon chali and kind of this hippie sort of boho print. You'll see a theme here. It seems my make nine are all tops mostly. Um, I think that's probably inspired by all of the Zoom chats that we've been having this year. Who cares what's on the bottom? All that really matters is from here up. <laughs> Number four is the Vogue 1708. And I really wanna make this cute romper here out of this cotton fabric. I got this in Vietnam in 2017. I haven't figured out what to make out of it. And it's a very loud print, so I kind of just had it at the back of the stash for a while now. But I think it'll be good enough for a wearable muslin of this um, to test out the fit. And if it looks good, it looks good. If not, it's okay. I've had it for a couple years and something needs to be done with it. So. That's the plan here. Number five, also at last year's Sew Expo, I got this really nice Pendleton wool. And in this, at the Sew Expo the year before that, I actually purchased this pattern, which is uh, based on the original Pendleton 49er jacket, and they re-released the pattern a couple years ago. So I thought it'd be really nice to make um, this jacket out of this wool, probably very similar to this one. Uh, the pattern doesn't include the belt, but I definitely want to make a belt for it. So I'll definitely be making a muslin for that because I do not want to be cutting into this wool um, without a muslin. So number six is something a little bit different. Um, my sister-in-law gave my mother-in-law a bunch of old saris and outfits that she didn't want anymore. And my mother-in-law knows that I sew, so she offered them up to me as fabric options. If you don't know, a sari is basically a long piece of fabric that gets pleated and wrapped um, into the shape that it looks like on the person. Um, and then a lot of Indian outfits come unstitched when you buy them, and then you take them to a tailor to get stitched in your size. So um, I picked out a couple uh, pieces of that to repurpose. So um, my number six is going to be a, the Sew Over It Frida blouse, and I'm gonna be making it out of this fabric. So I'll show you. This is what the um, outfit was supposed to look like if you get it stitched up, but it basically just comes as fabric. And what's cool about it is it has contrasting fabric kind of already built in. So one of the pieces is this burgundy polyester chiffon. It's super lightweight and drapey. Um, but then another piece of it comes like this, and you can see part of it has the matching fabric here, 
but then the other part of it has this really cool trim so i thought it would be cool to make the blouse out of this part of the fabric and then the sleeve use this neat trim let me see if i can actually show you so use this trim as this the cuff of the sleeve so then this is like the sleeve this is the cuff it has this really nice scalloped border on it so i thought that would be a fun project repurposing something um, for a new life number seven is going to be mccall 7946 and i was super inspired by all of the shirring this last summer and i really want to make a shirred top for this summer i don't think i have enough fabric for a dress but i want to make a top out of this kaufman seven berry cotton floral print it's a really cute ditzy print um, so yeah I'm gonna have to learn how to do shearing but uh, I'm up for the challenge and so I'll probably just end up cutting off one of these to kind of make it a top probably the one with the sleeves number eight is going to be the hey June handmade Vero beach hoodie out of this fabric here this is another Pendleton wool that I picked up at the sew expo and I thought it would be really neat little Baja style hoodie out of this wool. The fabric or the pattern doesn't specifically call for wool, but it seems like you can make it out of pretty much any hand, any woven fabric. And this is a pretty uh, thin wool. So I thought it'd be a nice, a nice little hoodie for the, for uh, winter time. So I was super inspired by the sample garment for the pattern. It has kind of very similar stripes that they played with on it. So this seems like a natural fit. Another one that I definitely want to do a muslin for because I do not want to be cutting into Pendleton wool without a very well-fitting situation. <laughs> Last but not least, number nine is also something a little bit different. Every single year I enter a garment into the state fair to be judged. Last year, or this year, 2020, the state fair was canceled. So it all kind of depends on whether the 2021 state fair happens. But every year I enter a short party dress to the short party dress division. And I've had third place twice and second place once. And so I'm hoping to get first place before I move on to another division. But basically, if it happens, I'm going to enter Vogue 1655, which is this out of this cobalt blue shantung. I already have it planned out. We'll see if it actually happens. And I really love entering the state fair. I kind of love being judged on my sewing. I love getting the feedback for it. And uh, it's always really fun to go to the fair, see what you've made, displayed, something a little bit different. Um, so that is make nine for 2021. So that is my, th so those are my plans for 2021. It's gonna be a busy year. We'll see what happens. Um, so 2021. So if nothing else, I'm ready to sew for 2021. If I can't do anything else or leave my house, I at least have my sewing and maybe that inspires you to also create a make nine for 2021 and just sew to our little hearts content. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this vlogmas journey and I will see you next year. Bye everyone.